All right, and now we're at the section of the course where we're going to start talking about ERC20s and tokens. So you can find the code associated with what we're going through in the GitHub repo, of course, associated with this course. Now, before we actually even go into building one of these, I know we've actually worked with them a little bit with the link token, but let's actually understand what an ERC20 is, what an EIP is, what an ERC is, and I actually have a video from my previous course which goes over this, so let's go ahead and watch that. Before we can understand what an ERC20 is or even what one of these tokens are, we first need to understand what is an ERC and then also what is an EIP. In Ethereum and Avalanche and Binance and Polygon, all these blockchains have what's called improvement proposals. And for Ethereum, they're called Ethereum improvement proposals or EIPs. And what people would do is they come up with these ideas to improve Ethereum or improve these layer ones like Polygon, Matic, Avalanche, etc. And on some GitHub or some open source repository, they'll add these new EIPs, they'll add these new improvement ideas to make the, these protocols better. Now, these improvements can really be anything. They can be anything from a core blockchain update to some standard that is gonna be a best practice for the entire community to adopt. Once an EIP gets enough insight, they also create an ERC, which stands for Ethereum Request for Comments. So EIP, Ethereum Pro Improvement Proposals, ERC, Ethereum Request for Comments. And again, these can be like BEP, PEP, you know, et cetera, for all these different blockchains. Both the improvement proposals and the request for comments all have these different tags. Now, they're numbered chronologically. So something like an ERC20 is going to be the 20th ERC slash EIP. The, the ERCs and the EIPs share that same number. And their websites like eips.ethereum.org they keep track of all these new ethereum improvement proposals and you can actually see them real time go through the process of being adopted by the community now one of these eips or ercs is going to be the erc20 or the token standard for smart contracts this is an improvement proposal that talks about how to actually create tokens and create these smart contract tokens I made a video about this recently. So in the GitHub repo associated with this course, we're gonna have a sub lesson and we're gonna watch a, a quick video that explains more about these different tokens. Now, first let's define even what are ERC20s. So ERC20s are tokens that are deployed on a chain using what's called the ERC20 token standard. You can read more about it in the ERC20 token standard here, link in the description as well. But basically it's a smart contract that actually represents a token. So it's token, but it's a smart contract, it's both. It's really cool. Tether, Chainlink, UniToken, and DAI are all examples of ERC20s. Technically, Chainlink is in the ERC677, as there are upgrades to the ERC20 that some tokens take that are still backwards compatible with ERC20s, and so basically you can think of them as ERC20s with a little additional functionality. Now, why would I even care to want to make an ERC20? Well, you can do a lot of really cool stuff with it. You can make governance token, you can secure an underlying network, you can create some type of synthetic asset, or really anything else. In any case, how do we build one of these ERC20s? How do we build one of these tokens? Well, all we have to do is build a smart contract that follows the token standard. All we have to do is build a smart contract that has these functions. It has a name function, a symbol function, decimals function, etc. All these functions. We need to be able to transfer it. We need to be able to get the balance of it, etc. And again, if you want to check out some of the improvements that are still ERC20 compatible, like the ERC677 or the ERC777, you definitely go check those out and build one of those instead.